something that I did a fair bit in anatomy last year was to draw out the structures we were meant to learn each week before the practical classes. I would look at the identify the following list in the workbook and compile images to use as references to make sure all the things listed in the workbook were incorporated into my notes. Anatomy is very much self-taught and continually reading through these big Latin words and familiarizing yourself with what the structures look like is ultimately what helps all this stick and helps you to make the most out of class, although this probably would be more applicable to in-person labs with specimens and hands-on dissection. For those of you who don't know, my name is Hanyu and I'm a member of the PS Upper Team and today I'll just be sharing a few resources that I found helpful when studying for anatomy over the past year and we'll link all of these over here. So throughout this video I'll just be talking a bit about how I use these particular resources and give you a bit of information as to what these resources contain. So first up is the Netas Atlas and also the Netas flashcards. So I happen to have a copy of the Netas Atlas over here. This is the sixth edition of it. If you're more of a visual learner, I would recommend checking this out. You can either get it as a PDF, um, either I think from one of the textbook folders or on the Google Drive. If you don't have a link to it, you can message any of us and we'll send you the link to that. Additionally, you can also borrow it from any of the Monash libraries if it's available. And if not, you can, I think, put a hold on it and they'll deliver it in around, I think, two to three weeks. Um, yeah, so the atlas, it pretty much just contains a bunch of diagrams with uh, quite comprehensive labels in there. So it really does help you uh, get a good idea of how the different structures link together. Only downside, I would say, is it doesn't have a lot of relation to your clinical pathologies, um, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But it's really good if you want to get a kind of basic understanding as to what kind of muscles there are in the arm and where they sit in relation to each other. And on that note, there's also the Netters flashcard as well, which you can kind of see um, pinned up there. But if you decide to get it, it'll come in a box that looks like this with a whole bunch of um, flashcards in here. And for these, I guess you can kind of just test yourself. There is also a PDF version of it, which we can send you. Um, but if you do prefer having that hard copy, yeah, I would highly recommend getting the Netters flashcards as well. So now we'll just be talking a bit about Teach Me Anatomy and KenHub. So you may have heard of these resources from students in upper year levels. And the really good thing about both of these resources is that it compresses a lot of complicated information into digestible chunks, which you can understand quite easily. And additionally, they also link different uh, structures in your body to clinical pathologies that are also relevant. For example, um, I guess Ken Hub might talk about, I guess, the nerves that run in your upper arm. But in addition to this, it will also mention, okay, if this nerve supply is compromised, what could happen? Is this just going to be um, a matter of, uh, I guess, numbness and uh, tingling, or is this going to impact on your motor function? So both of these resources are really good to check out as well. So next up, we've got BioDigital. So the really good thing about BioDigital is that it can isolate different parts of your body. For example, you can tell it to just pull up a single arm and on this arm, it might have like all of the muscles, a bunch of nerves, a bunch of um, arteries and veins, and you can also take away certain muscles as well. So when you click on it, you can basically, let's say, remove the biceps, remove the um, biceps brachii or something. And whilst you're removing these muscles, a, you can test yourself on them, and B, it's going to reveal all of the underlying nerves and also uh, vasculature as well. So that's really good in seeing how things fit in together in real life, and you can rotate the image around as well, which is something that you don't really get when you're just using the atlas or flashcards. And uh, additionally, with BioDigital, this will come when you guys are learning cardio, but there is one particular, I think, um, model of a heart that shows the actual movement of the electrical impulses from I guess like the top left part of the heart all the way down to when your ventricles actually contract which I personally thought was really cool um, but yeah I'll leave you guys to have a look through that on your own and for the last little part this isn't really about resources but just some general advice for anatomy 
you can, definitely try and draw out the anatomy of, I guess, your upper limb or lower limb or whatever it is you're studying. And the purpose of this is it really helps you consolidate um, the different structures and how they sit in relation to one another. And on that note, if you have any, I guess, uh, non-medical friends or, I guess, family members, you can try explaining um, the stuff that you've been learning to them and see if they can understand it. So the purpose of this is it forces you to articulate um, whatever it is that you have been learning. And this requires you to have a really solid understanding of how everything fits together. And chances are they're going to be trying to fire rapid questions at you. Like, why does this do this? Why does this do this? And if you can, I guess, answer those questions and provide good, um, I guess, responses, that really does help with your learning as well. All right, so that's all there is from me. So good luck in studying for anatomy for semester two. And if you have any kind of questions, um, feel free to put them on the Curious Cat Chat or message any of us and we'll be more than happy to give you a response. Hey guys, I'm Faze. I'm one of your Year 2 PS Papa members and I hope you guys are all having a lovely holiday um, despite all the shit with lockdown and Sem 2 being online. I know a lot of people wanted, me including, I just wanted to be on campus especially since it's our last pre clean year. But I hope you guys are having fun anyway. Um, so this video is just a little bit about Sem 2 which is a lot of just drowning under anatomy so hopefully it'll help you guys just to figure out where you guys are going. Um, I know anatomy study is really personal to a lot of people so it's a lot about at the beginning stages just trans like having a go at everything and trying to figure out what actually works for you. Um, so it's really easy to be overwhelmed by anatomy and I think the reasons for that is because the faculty don't really give you a lot of direction. So they pretty much just chuck you into a topic and then they're like learn it and you don't really know too much about like what exactly you're meant to learn, um, what's even going to come in the exams and it's really difficult to figure out and it's really overwhelming. Um, so hopefully by watching this video and just by having a go at looking at all the resources that are out there and there's so many, um, just figuring out what's going to help um, and what's going to be relevant to you. Um, so last in this year for anatomy, um, I think the easiest and the best tool that I used, um, which was just to memorize facts and to memorize clinical conditions, was Anki. So I know you guys have had this like huge thing about Anki and probably everyone's been shoving it in your faces. 
um, so I won't say too much but um, I'll just give you a 20 second rundown of how I use it so I just basically copy and paste my notes into the Anki flashcard um, and then all you can do is just use closed captions um, figure out what you're going to use closed captions for and make multiple flashcards off the one topic and then that'll just save you heaps of time you don't have to like write your notes or anything into Anki anymore um, it's just really easy to use um, but yeah so that's just an easy way of how to use it um, in order to actually make the notes and I think most people agree with me um, when I say that Moore and Dally's is probably the best resource that you've got for um, just for um, anatomy in general so it's like the holy grail because it's literally got your anatomy basics it's got your key structures of like all your features or your organs and stuff and it's also got your clinical anatomy these really helpful blue boxes at the end of every chapter um, and so it's really helpful um, but even with more and dallies there's a lot of stuff in more and dallies which you you won't need to know um, things which aren't even going to be useful um, so you it's a lot about just picking and choosing and figuring out what's actually relevant and what's going to be um, tested which hopefully the PS publicize will help you to figure out but also hopefully like your tutors will guide you um, fingers crossed um, but anyway even if you don't really know I think the main focus should be clinical anatomy because that's going to be your main focus that's what's going to be tested at the end of the year as well um, so for specimens and figuring out 3D structures and everything, I have two um, main things that I think you guys should have a look at at least. So the first one is Netta's flashcards, which are literally just flashcards um, with clinical structures that are really helpful um, and you can find them on the G drive. Um, and BioDigital is just an online tool. Um, it basically has a 3D human model um, which you can like play around with and see like all the different relations between like muscles, bones. Um, and organs which is really interesting and really cool um but yeah so if you guys want any more advice or want to talk about anything hair or anything in general um please feel free to message me i'm a bit shit at replying to messages but i'll try my best cheers